A foraging honeybee will eventually discover a new food source, such as a freshly blooming flower or artificial feeder placed by a scientist. After this visit, an interesting thing happens. Over the next few minutes, many other bees arrive at the same location. They don't travel as a group. Instead, each bee finds the food source individually. How could these bees, who held no previous knowledge of this site, suddenly know precisely where the feeder was located? Is it possible that the animals communicate amongst themselves? To answer this question, Austrian biologist Karl von Frisch devised a series of experiments in the 1940s. Researchers at Georgia Tech have reproduced von Frisch's pioneering experiments using a modern observation hive. Two feeders are placed in different directions away from the hive. At each location, visiting honeybees are marked with a small spot of paint. A separate colour of paint is used at each station, so when a bee returns to the hive, it can easily be determined which feeding site it visited. Before von Frisch, other scientists had observed that returning bees tended to waggle about excitedly in a figure eight pattern before sharing the collected pollen and nectar with their hive mates. While both sets of bees perform the classic figure eight dance, the orientation of the dances is offset between the two groups. Bees returning from one feeder perform a rotated version of the dance done by the other bees. Incredibly, the angle of rotation precisely matches the angle between the feeding stations and the hive. This must be a clue to the mystery of how the bees are able to share information about the location of food. In Antarctica, if penguin eggs are not tended for even a short moment, they will freeze. Parents take turns sitting on the nest and foraging for food. As a returning mate approaches the nest, you will see the greeting display. This is used to recognize a partner before turning over the nest. Parents must be very careful during the nest exchange as eggs sometimes roll out of the nests and are lost. Young chicks also need to be guarded both from the cold and from the predatory spear. Here we see a parent returning from a feeding trip, greeting its mate and then exchanging places on the nest. We found that the ants connected themselves very, very, very well, more than we had thought. Um, and you can imagine you have 100 ants, which means 600 legs. 99% of those legs will be connected to a neighbor. So they're very, very good at making, maintaining this network. We thought they would be like grains of rice. So when you put grains of rice in a jar, they sort of just all stack and it's, it's, and it's, it's quite random. But the ants actually form almost a quite regular network. Um, Grains of rice will stack on, them, stack on themselves in parallel, but ants form T-junctions. They're really forming these very strong um, junctions in order to support the structure of the raft. Ants are opaque, you can't see through them. Um, just like the bones in your body, the only way you can figure out what's going on, you've got to basically go through a CT scanner. And so that's what we put the ants through. We can see basically where every single ant, just like where every bone in your body is oriented and how they're placed next to each other.